starting your day with focus and intention and purpose and growth enables you to be a, the best version that you can possibly be. Hello, everybody. This is Jake Sunzino, host of the Jake and Gino podcast here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, chef, father, six, best-selling author, the G-Daddy, Gino Barbo. Gino, how's it going? Stenzi. Doing great today, Stenzi. How you doing? Always making it happen, big man. Today's guest is on a mission to elevate the consciousness of humanity. He is the author of the highly rated bestselling, The Miracle Morning. And after defying all odds, he is now one of the most inspiring, highly entertaining keynote speakers around the world. So without further ado, hello, Rod. Welcome to the show. Jake and Gino, it's good to be back. Okay. So there's one or two people listening right now that may not know your story. So for those folks, please just give us a, a quick synopsis. Tell us, tell us your story and how that led to the Miracle Morning book and also the new movie. Yeah, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, and I'll do my best to keep it short here. But uh, in when I was 20 years old, I was driving home after giving a speech at a sales conference and my car was hit head on by a drunk driver at 80 miles an hour. And uh, that night I was found dead at the scene. Uh, I, I, my heart stopped for six minutes. I broke 11 bones, was in a coma then for six days. And when I came out of the coma, I was told I would never walk again. That was kind of my first like, you know, rock bottom in life where you imagine that like, things can't get worse. And then you fast forward to 2008 when I was late 20s um, and the economy crashed and I kind of crashed with it. And like, you know, millions of Americans, I lost over half of my income. I couldn't pay the bills. My house went into foreclosure, uh, so on and so forth. And I got really depressed. And after six months of kind of a downward spiral, I just one day my friend gave me some advice. He goes, Hal, it's real simple. Go figure out what are the daily habits of the world's most successful people go do what they do and you'll see similar results. And I was like, that sounds too simple. Like, you know, um, and so I just realized that most of the world's most successful people have a morning ritual that they do every day. And so I basically that morning resolved that I'm going to create the most, I'm going to study what the world's most successful people do specific to their morning ritual. And I'm going to combine the best of the best practices. And I created this ritual that was just for me. It wasn't a book idea. Um, and within two months of doing this daily ritual, uh, I had more than doubled my income. I went from being in the worst shape of my life physically to committing to run a 52 mile ultra marathon. And, you know, and I wasn't depressed anymore. I was on fire and uh, it happened so fast. I told my wife, it feels like a miracle. And she goes, it's your miracle morning. I go, yeah, I like that. And, you know, and then I taught it to my coaching clients, you know, and one thing led to another. And then I saw the results they were getting. And I went, well, if this miracle morning changed my life and I wasn't a morning person to start, it changed my clients' lives and they weren't morning people. This could change the world. And um, it took me three years, but I wrote and self-published The Miracle Morning. That was in 2012. And, um, you know, and I didn't know that it would, yeah, I mean, I didn't have any huge, huge ambition for it. I just wanted to change a few people's lives with it. And now we've sold, I think we're right around 3 million copies sold. Um, it's translated in 37 languages, uh, number one best-selling book in Korea, in Brazil, number six in France. I mean, it's done really well around the world and here in the U.S. And uh, that, that gave birth to my mission because I've seen millions of people who weren't morning people, how it transformed their lives. And so my mission is that you mentioned it at the beginning, elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time, one person at a time. And, uh, and then you also mentioned the movie. Um, we filmed a documentary. It took us six years to film the documentary because I was diagnosed with cancer halfway through, and I was given a 20% chance of surviving. And I called my filmmaker, and I was like, hey, the, the, the movie's on hold, man. I, I, have, I have a really aggressive, really scary cancer, not looking good. And uh, he said, hey, can I come film you beat this cancer? And I was like, What? And he said, Hal, you know, those marketers, they just want to sink their teeth in. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> well, no, he's actually, he's not a marketer. He really is an kidding. artist, I'm right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. but, 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 um, and his, his, his vision was like, dude, I'm making a film about this movement you created. And now the guy that created the movement is facing death. Like this is part of the story, you know? And I was, I was a little great motivation for him saying that too, right? Like, Hey, let's, let's do this and let's overcome it. The, the way he said that to you, it's great. Yeah. And he did say that he goes, Hal, I, I know, I, I'm sure this is a scary time for you. He said, but I want to tell you, I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to beat this. And I yeah. think we can inspire 
uh, you know, a lot of people if we if we capture that journey. And so, um, yeah, so so the book's doing well. The film came out, and and now I'm cancer free. I'm very grateful to say, and um, just focused on my my family, my family, and my my mission. So I got my my personal mission is the family, and the the yeah, the global mission is the miracle morning. So how m- most entrepreneurs that we interview on here all have that catalyzing statement, and everyone listening to it, I want you to think of what your catalyzing statement at Jake and Gino is. We create multifamily entrepreneurs. What is your catalyzing statement that you're listening as you're listening? Can we go over yours? Just, just how did you come up with it? With it? How did you crystallize it? Elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time. I mean, where did that come from? Because that takes a lot of thought. It, look, you could read it in three seconds, but there's a lot of meat in that. That didn't just pop out like quick, right? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. A little so, thought. well, it, it, so it didn't start as that when I when I wrote the book. So I wrote the book, self published it, you know, and and didn't have any ambitious goal. And then I started getting email after email and Amazon review after Amazon review saying really like profound, dramatic statements. Like this saved my, the Miracle Morning saved my marriage. The Miracle Morning got me off my depression medication. Um, the Miracle Morning uh, enabled me to finally write my book or start live my dream or overcome insecurity or anxiety or whatever. And they were, it was so profound that I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, this isn't just a book that I sell published and move on to the next thing in my life. I now have a responsibility based on what this book's doing for people to get this in the hands of as many people as I can. And so I just picked the arbitrary big number, a million. So my original mission was change 1 million lives one morning at a time. And once we reached well over a million people, I went, uh, what now, you know? And I was gonna say one bill, I was just gonna change it to 1 billion. And, and that kind of is still what it is. That's the goal, but um, I don't remember the exact what led to it, but I just really started to see humanity as a whole at, that, that, you know, that, that we were all facing a lot of struggles um, now more than ever, more than we were then, I think. But um, yeah, and I just, I, I started studying elevating consciousness and my own consciousness. And I read, uh, I read uh, David Hawkins book, um, Power Focus. And anyway, so that became like, like elevating my own consciousness became mm-hmm. something I was really aware of. And then I started looking at how that might apply to humanity. And if we can elevate the consciousness of humanity so that we're all acting from a place of compassion and love and ambition and, you know, all these values that kind of make humanity uh, at our finest. So you're living this. You are the miracle morning. You you literally are your own test subject. Try to pin it down. Is it what is it that so many of these folks were lacking? Is it is it the structure? Is it added accountability? Can you really drill down to like, why is this so impactful? Yeah, I think that there's two reasons. Um, one is the impact of how you start your day. If you think about it, how you start your day sets the tone, the context and the direction for who you are in on any given day and how you experience your life, how you show up for yourself for those that you love, for those that you lead, right? So starting your day with focus and intention and purpose and growth enables you to be a better version of the person that went to bed the night before. And then you bring that to your family and you bring that to your your workplace and your clients and your employees, everything that you do. So that in and of itself, just that simple act of starting your day proactively versus you think about most people start our day with, with a level of like, resistance and procrastination the alarm goes off and you're like yeah i know i said i have big goals and dreams but but i'd rather lay here unconscious it's, for nine it's more just minutes gross than- hearing you say that right now it's like <laughs> i don't even want to hear that <laughs> yeah, right and so but you think about it, it really doesn't even make sense to hit the snooze button yeah. if you really are serious about like you know creating the most extraordinary yeah, yeah, life yeah. that you can you want to hit the ground running so to speak so that's the first thing in and of itself. If all you do what is, is the wake first up, thing though, because I heard you say, is, is it intention? Is that what we're kind of drilling down on that first one or, or, or am I off? Um, mm, that's intention, purpose. Well, I don't know if I'd na- narrow it down to one word. You I would just focus. say again, it's, it's, it's starting your day in a growth oriented, goal oriented, you know, focused way. Mm-hmm. The second aspect of it is the miracle morning is made up of six practices and the six practices are organized in an acronym, SAVERS, S-A-V-E-R-S. The S is for silence. That's your meditation and or your prayer time to start your day in a calm, focused, centered, peaceful way. The A for affirmations are written statements, not not the kind we've been taught by self-help gurus for decades, like just pump yourself up, say, I am awesome. I am a champion. I am, I am a millionaire, right? 
No, the way I teach affirmations. Oh, you're getting me very... motivated there, man. I felt good for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a net positive, even if you yeah, just yeah. do that. Uh -huh. But for me, affirmations are, I am committed to blank. It's, I am affirming, not that I'm something that I want to be, that I don't necessarily believe I am yet. Like if, if you're struggling financially saying, I am a millionaire, I am a millionaire, I am a millionaire. Like you're fighting with reality, right? And the truth will always prevail. But if you say, I am committed to becoming a millionaire, or I am committed to doing the things today that will keep me on track for financial freedom, that's a very different psychological programming that you're taking on. So the V for visualization, the E for exercise, starting your day with movement, the R for reading, right? We're all one book or one page away from learning something that'll change our life. And the final S is for scribing, which is uh, a fancy word for writing or journaling. So I'm going to quote Robert Kiyosaki. Most listeners probably know, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I got my purple uh, on today, just for that. You got, just yeah, for that you, quote. yeah, you got your Robert color on. <laughs> Either J.P. Sears or Robert Kiyosaki with that purple shirt. I'm not sure which. But, um, but anyway, uh, Robert Kiyosaki uh, reached out and invited me on the Rich Dad radio show. And I did not, he, I was blown away because he's a, one of my favorite authors. He said he's re he read my book, The Miracle Morning, three times. And this was years ago, so he might have read it more, but three times he said he does it almost every single day with his wife. And then he summed this up really well. He said, Hal, if you study the world's most successful people across all industries, all walks of life, he said, you'd be hard pressed to find one of them that doesn't swear by at least one of the savers and attribute it to their success or attribute their success to it. He said, that's what makes the Miracle Morning, literally, he said, I, I think you named it correctly. It creates miracles for people because they're not just leveraging the power of one of these life-changing practices. They're doing all six of the world's most ancient, proven personal development practices. Uh, and they're, they're, they're benefiting from all six of them. And so that's it. If, if you wake up with intention, you wake up and you meditate, you wake up and read, read your goals, you wake up and read some affirmations, you wake up and do some exercise, you wake up with purpose, focus, intention, you're gonna have a better day. You're gonna be more focused, more energized, and your day is gonna be better. But So that's the first step, it's how you start the day. But when you combine the six most timeless, proven personal development practices in the history of humanity, that's when you see results beyond what you've, you know, you, you, you can even anticipate or possible. So it basically you took, and this, this is not meant to be a negative because I'm, I, I practice, right? I practice yeah. what you preach. Okay. I read the book. I, I completely am bought in, but you're, you're bundling all of these <clears throat> personal develop it's bundled. Right. Yeah. And then there's a way to put personal self growth into practice. And if I can, if I can chunk down what you were just saying, you're starting. And I was, cause I was trying to really get to the root of why yes, is this so yeah. impactful? You're starting the day on offense. You're, you're wielding a, a, a sword of offense and I'm going to dictate to the world versus what you said a moment ago, when you wake up, you hit the snooze, life is coming at you and happening to you. Mm. It's literally like a, a growth mindset versus a victim mindset. There's, yeah. There's resistance and, and there's things coming into your life when you delay and world, the world is coming at you versus offense. And you're saying, no, I'm going to dictate to the world as long as I can that day until maybe we hit three. And then, okay, maybe it gets the best of us. But you're starting off on the right foot and starting on offense versus defense. I, yeah, I think that's a beautiful way of saying it. And, and that reminded me another way that I often will phrase it is it's simply starting your day by putting yourself in a peak physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual state so that you are the best version that you can possibly be. High octane gas in the body. Today. Yeah. And, yeah. And here's the other thing too. You're cheating in a good way because uh -huh. I, it, it, craziness about this. I'm up at six every day. I'm, I'm, all my stuff is responded to like come nine, 839. I'm clean, set and ready while everyone else is just getting started. I just scam two and a half <laughs> hours off of everybody else because they're starting their day at 830. Yeah. Weird, weird little trick too. Sometimes if I get up 10 minutes early, like 5.50 or 5.45, it like, I smoke those previous days and I'm even that much better. That extra 10 or 15 minutes, just a weird little thing from my personal experience, but it, shit works. I love it. So Hal, Jake's affirmations are, I am awesome and I am a millionaire. So I can, <laughs> I can attest to that because he is. But yeah, there are exactly, some of us. But he is those things, so it's authentic. <laughs> yes, but that's, some that's of the us. Important part of affirmation. Some of us on here, though, they're listening. They're like, "That's not me," and I can't get up at five fifty in the morning. What do you say to those naysayers? Because I'm sure a lot of people are converted. They're not morning people. But what do you say to them to get them 
to at least try it out. Give it a week. I'm a multifamily entrepreneur, Gino. Okay, I'll give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Gino, good question. And there's there's two things that I usually share. Um, the first is I wasn't a morning person, and in fact, I we once surveyed our community. Limiting belief. What'd you say? <laughs> I said limiting, limiting belief. belief. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. That's why I say that in the book. It's a limiting belief, right? Saying I am not a morning person. It's like yeah. you're not born one way or the other. Um, that's like saying, you know, I used to think I wasn't a runner because I hated running. And then I committed to a friend to raise money for charity that I would run a, an ultra marathon. I had never run more than a mile at once. And I committed to run 52 in a day. And, um, and I realized that I, and I'm like, how am I going to do this? I'm not a runner. And, and then I went my first day and I just like went for like a light jog for, you know, a few minutes and I'm like, oh my God, I'm out of breath. And then I did it again the next day and the next day. And all of a sudden, after a few weeks of that, I'm like, I'm a runner. Weird. If you don't wake up early, you're not a morning person. If you don't run, you're not a runner. If you start doing either, you become either. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so for those that say they're not a morning person, I would say, yeah, it is a limiting belief, but it's one that many of us share. When I surveyed the Miracle Morning community a few years ago, because somebody asked me what percentage of Miracle Morning practitioners were already morning people and what oh. percentage of them were, were not. So this was completely outside of their comfort zone. And I didn't know the answer to the question. So we surveyed our community. 72% of the millions of people, give or take 72% wow. uh, said they were they had never identified as a morning person before they read the miracle morning. And so it's kind of, if, if, you know, if I can do it, if they can do it, you know, then, then you can too. And it's not about waking up at five 50 or five or whatever. It's just wait, the miracle morning minimal. It's just wake up 30 minutes earlier than you already do. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wakes up at eight, get up at seven 30, it's not, it's not like, you know, I mean, you're, uh, no offense, but you're pretty weak minded. If you don't believe you have the ability to get up 30 minutes earlier Total for bullshit. something that can yeah. have a radical benefit in your life. And if that means going to bed 30 minutes earlier, you know, I don't know what most people, most people, I think they're, they're not really productive at, you know, one in the morning, two in the morning. Usually it's like they're on the internet or on their phone or watching Netflix. So if it means trading where, all right, I'm going to go to bed 30 minutes earlier so that I can wake up 30 minutes earlier and start my day in that peak physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual state. Or just let me have that time. I'll take it all and I'll smoke you. It's fine. Yeah, there you go. I'm great with it. How? what is the miracle equation? So the miracle equation, it, that was my follow-up book. And I always kind of joke that mo from the outside, people go, wow, he's really milking this miracle concept, right? Um, hey, the chicken soup, man. You're the modern day chicken soup guy, right? <laughs> just take, right. It, take it the distance. No shame in that. <laughs> but no, but the irony is, so I, I came up with the concept miracle morning in 2008, 2007, 2008, right around that time. Uh, miracle equation I came up with in 2000. So maybe even 1999, I was trying to break a sales record at the time and I had a very limited time to do it. And so I reverse engineered it. I get, okay, this feels impossible. First of all, no one in the history, the 50 year history of the company I worked for had ever done this. So it, you know, up until that point, it wasn't possible, like the four minute mile. And then I, I reverse engineered. I said, okay, if I let's fast forward to the end of the sales contest, Let's say I hit the goal and I broke the all-time record. If that were to happen, what would I have to think or do between now and then? And I came up with two really simple decisions that I would have to make. Number one, I would have to maintain unwavering faith that I could achieve that goal. Because for most, almost all of us, when you are working towards a goal, especially if it's something that big where it's never been done before, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have, you're going to be filled with self-doubt. You're going to, you know, you're going to be halfway there in terms of time. Like, all right, I'm halfway, I'm halfway through the, the time period. I have to reach the goal, but I'm only a quarter of the way there. Right. And that self-doubt is going to overtake you. So I decided no matter what, no matter how much or little I sell on any given day or at any given point, even to the last minute, I will maintain unwavering faith that I'm going to reach my goal. And the way I'm going to, I'm going to actualize that is I just decided I am committed to reaching this goal. No matter what, there is no other option. That was, that was my mantra. I said it over and over and over. I'm committed to reaching this goal. No matter what, there is no other option. And whenever I would have another no sale or, you know, and be further behind, I just said it again and again, and with more conviction and that unwavering faith was that was how I controlled my over overwhelm, my fear, my self doubt was that was my, my choice is okay. I feel fear. I'm doubting myself, but no, 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 there's no room for that. I am committed to reaching this goal, no matter what, there's no other option. So that was the first decision. The second was extraordinary effort. I thought, I mean, as simple as it sounds, 
I've got to maintain unwavering faith that I can do this thing that no one's ever done before. And I have to be willing to put forth extraordinary effort, which to me was consistent daily effort for as long as it took to reach the goal. And those two decisions, they were tested day after day after day, day after day after day. And I ended up reaching the goal in the la literally the last hour. And it felt like a miracle. And so it was after I did it that I go, dude, that little formula, that's like the miracle equation, like unwavering faith plus extraordinary effort equals miracles. Mm -hmm. And so then I started teaching it to my coaching client. I was coaching my colleagues and one after another, after another, they went out and either broke an all-time company record or they, they broke their own personal best over and over and over. And so I always thought, man, this strategy works. And if you studied the world's most successful athletes or in different industries, you find they maintain unwavering faith that they're going to make every shot they take. And that's why you see some of like, like in the NBA, some of the best basketball players, right? They'll have the worst first quarter, the worst second quarter, the worst third quarter, right? But they- Tom Brady 2T, right? The guy yeah. just fucking keeps going. I can't but stand it. But unwavering <laughs> faith until the last possible moment, yeah. an extraordinary effort. And it's like, I don't know what, it, I don't know how to explain those intangibles. Like the universe rewards those people. They're like, all right. We tested you over and over up. and over again. You this passed. Not quitting. Here you yeah. go. We're going to make some miraculous stuff happen. And so I always want to write a book about it. And then after, when I had cancer, I decided, how am I going to beat these grim odds? I'm going to maintain unwavering faith that I will beat this cancer. And I'm going to put forth extraordinary effort and do everything in my power to beat this cancer. And once the doctors were blown away by how quickly I, I was in remission and I stayed in remission. And, and so that's when I went to my publisher and I was like, I... I really feel like this message could help the world and, and help a lot of people. And so last thing I'll say on this is the miracle morning is your daily practice for personal development. Your, the miracle equation is the daily process for goal achievement. Al, do you mind if I expand upon that a little bit about, about the, your whole miracle equation? Yeah, please. So when I, as I'm hearing you say this, for me, I'm a huge Stephen Covey fan. And it <laughs> sounds as if you need to start with the end in mind. So you started with the end in mind. And how do you do that? Jake likes the woo-woo. You close your eyes and you picture yourself achieving. I like the what? Goal. What was that? You're not into the woo-woo stuff. But Sometimes you know, I can get with the woo. <laughs> I like that. Like, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm more the woo-woo guy, right? So uh, you, you close your eyes and you really picture yourself achieving this. But you need to choose your values. And the values that Hal chose are unwavering faith and extraordinary effort. That's what he needs to accomplish. But it's about clarity. He knows what he wants to accomplish. He knows what he, the end in mind. And then he reverse engineers that. So, you know, putting in the miracle morning, those things that he's doing using this miracle equation, you could accomplish almost anything if, you, if you're guided, you're focused, and you have Especially attention. Especially in business, right? Sports mm -hmm. are limiting, be, you, know, uh, you know, because sometimes, okay, it's going to come down to genetics and how tall are you and how fast are you. But business is, is kind of a clean slate. You want to yeah. go out there and kick down some doors. Some of the most successful people that I've seen and interacted with, they don't have the biggest social lives. Let's be honest. They sit and they grind until they meet the objective or they, they hit the goal. So it's exactly what he's saying. They, they set the target and they just don't quit and they keep mm -hmm. pushing until they make it. How? how do you love your life even when it sucks? That's <laughs> my recent podcast. Um, it's actually funny. My uncle, uh, I had no idea he ever listened to my podcast. He texted me yesterday, I think day before <laughs> he said, Hal, I actually started listening to your podcast. And that one that you did on how to love your life, even when it sucks. Uh, that was really a game changer for me. I was like, Uncle Mike, you're listening to my podcast. That's so Isn't weird. That no great? way when family gets yes, involved. Yes, right? I love this. It's like that's the best. They're like, they're like, what do you do for a living? I do podcasts, and they jump on, and they listen to, you and they're like, do I know this little guy from like 30 years ago? And he's yeah, actually yeah. he <laughs> actually sounds intelligent now, dude. It's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like awesome. you were a total screw up when I knew you. You know. <laughs> um. So how do you love your life even when it sucks? So it's all about what you focus on. And um, you know, when when the pandemic hit, I started asking myself personally, but also for my audience. Um, what, what should I be focused on right now? And what should I encourage or invite people to focus on? And what I realized is, well, the, the, if, if we right now, and, and this is true for the last year and a half, we have more things that are out of our control thrown at us every single day, right? There's so many worldly things, what the governments are doing, what's happening in other countries, the vi all these things that are out of our control. And what I realized, it's a really simple distinction, but it's really profound, is that when we focus on things that are out of our control, we feel out of control. 
And that's what causes stress. And we get depressed and all of these things. And if we're not aware of that, then we're going to constantly be focusing on things that are out of our control, feeling out of control. And when you feel out of control, it's hard to take control of anything mm -hmm. from your emotional state to your actions, your behaviors, et cetera. And so what I realize is the only thing that it, it makes sense for me to only focus on that, which I can control. And so the, and the second part of that was how do I want to feel? on any, in any given moment. I don't want to be stressed. I don't want to live in fear. I want to feel good. I want to be happy. I want to be at peace with the things I can't change, right? And so it was a simply clarifying, how do I want to feel? And then I'm going to align my thoughts, my words, and my actions with that reality that I want to create, that I want to live because the world's always been created. There's always, you know, there's all, there's always been infinite things to focus on that can make our lives feel terrible or make our lives feel amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think I was blessed, you know, blessing in disguise. But when I was 20, I had my car accident. I broke 11 bones. You know, I died, all of that. I came out of the coma and I had to assess, wait a minute, my you know, mom and dad are telling me what happened to me. And I'm going, so wait, I'm never going to walk again. I'm going to be in a wheelchair the rest of my life at 20 years old. And I'm like, oh my, what? And then I realized even back then, okay, well, if I'm in a wheelchair the rest of my life, I can't change that I'm in a wheelchair. I can just choose how I feel in any given moment and how I view my life. And I told my mom and dad, I said, I will be the happiest. If I'm in a wheelchair the rest of my life, I'll be the happiest person you've ever seen in a wheelchair because I'm in a wheelchair either way. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, all of this is just examples pointing to the same thing, which is we all have the ability to choose how we experience our lives in any given moment based on which aspects of our lives we focus on and we mm -hmm. highlight and we emphasize. And so that's it. Even when life sucks, you can acknowledge the suck and go, yeah, that sucks. That That's difficult, man. Like when I had cancer, I go, yeah, I got to fight cancer. I didn't ask for that. But I'm not going to ever, and, and listen closely to this, everybody, I will never allow my circumstances to define my emotional well-being. I will choose happy. I will choose grateful. I will choose optimistic. I will, I will choose how I feel in any given moment, regardless of what's going on outside of me. And so that's how, even when life sucks, how you can still, you know, love, love the life that you have. I, I just want to piggyback on that real quick, because I think a lot of folks don't realize how many, once you settle in with yourself to the choices and how you're going to feel, there's more doors open to most people than they realize. There's more choices that you can make than you're giving yourself credit for. And I think sometimes people limit themselves to what's actually open to them. You know, and just an mm -hmm. example, we, we use it all the time. I moved out of New York in 2011. It wasn't a good fit for me on many levels. Most people say, I can't do that or that's not. So I think a lot of times we limit ourselves and we impose uh, undue restrictions. And I think sometimes people just need to be more open-minded to what's actually possible. Um, just if I could just add that to it. So you're going to say something. Yeah, Jake and Hal, what I would say is everyone listening to this, I challenge you all. This is one of the detriments of social media. Social media is fantastic. But if you're on Facebook every 20 minutes and you're hearing everyone else's opinion, I'll share a quick story with you yesterday. My wife was on, on Facebook, story about the, the COVID and the pandemic, and it really, really, quote unquote, triggered her. Nothing really bothers her. But this story really bothered her. And for the next four or five hours, she was off. She wasn't Julia, homeschooling six kids and all that. She was off. I could see she was off. And by the end of the day, I said, hey, what's going on? And she said, oh, I was reading the story. So I challenge everybody, watch what you're reading. It's not that it's good or bad to be on. It's how you use it and how addicted you get to it. Check Facebook once or twice a day. Don't be on it all the time because it is yeah. going to take up a lot of your time. And what Hal says, you're living it through other things. And, and you yeah, you're playing those. someone else's game and not yours. You're, you're on exactly. defense there instead of offense. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's an important thing. Hal, before we go to the short answers, dive into that Miracle Morning movie. I mean, how that came about, uh, where people can find more, more information about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can, if you go to miracle morning movie.com, you can, you can watch it on Amazon prime. You can watch it on Vimeo and it's all, it's, and there's no links there, but it just got onto iTunes and Google play store and all that. So um, wherever you want to watch the movie, but the um, yeah, the premise of it. So my, my buddy is a filmmaker, Nick Conadera. He is a filmmaker and he was at my house for dinner and he goes, Hal, what should I make my next film on? And I said, I think you should pick a topic that you really believe in. And, 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 you know, if you want to, you know, find something that, that helps people and then make a film, you know, kind of like miracle. Cause he asked me, how's miracle morning done so well? I said, because it helps people in a meaningful way very quickly. I said, so why don't you model that for the movie you do? Don't just make an entertaining movie, make a movie that helps people. And, and we're talking about like half an hour. He goes, wait, why don't we just do a, a miracle morning documentary? 
And I'm like, duh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, let, let's keep talking. So we started <laughs> filming it, and what it be, what the initial intention of it was, um, Robert Kiyosaki, I had just met, he had just had me on the show, he was a huge fan, and so I, I reached out, I said, hey, would you be in this movie? And, and we, we come and interview you about your Miracle Morning. And he said, sure. So I was like, okay, okay. So what if we, what if we showed really, you know, like some famous successful mm. people and how they, what their miracle mornings are. And so we interviewed Robin Sharma and Lewis Howes and um, Mel Robbins, author of the five second rule. And, um, you know, uh, Layla Ali, Muhammad Ali's daughter. She's an 18 time world, time world champion boxer. So all these people that are successful in different ways. And, uh, and then we went around the world and we interviewed people who had these really profound miracle morning success stories, like just ordinary folks. But this gal Rister in um, Kenya, we flew to Kenya to film her. She's a single mom. Her husband left her after she went blind. He didn't want to be with someone blind. So she lost her eyesight and he left and then she was depressed discovered the miracle morning it turned her life around she became a motivational speaker all these things this guy mike eaton he was obese his entire life read the miracle morning and in the next six months he lost uh i believe 90 pounds in the next six months so his story's in the film and then i got cancer as i mentioned halfway through so the film just became this incredible inspiring story of you know, you see me at my lowest points and how I'm maintaining that positive mindset and then how you can apply that in your own life. And then it show it brings the book to life. It, you know, instead of just hearing about the miracle morning, you see, wow, look at this person and how the miracle morning has transformed their life. And, 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 and then you, you just kind of see what's possible for you through the experience of other people. That's awesome. Thanks. All right, gang, let's take a quick time out here from our sponsor. Are you looking for ways to improve your life? Here at Jake and Gino, our mission is to empower students through financial education and the vehicle of multifamily investing. Yes, Jake. We agree that a person with financial intelligence can change the world for the better. We've created our proprietary three-step framework, buy right, manage right, and finance right, that we teach to our community. This framework, along with education, our one-on-one -on -one mentorship, on-site boot camps, and the amazing community has propelled our students to massive success. We've all been there. We've had so many students that have been able to shift their mindset, overcome limiting beliefs, and set a clear path to achieve their goals. Whether you're currently fixing and flipping, wholesaling, or buying single family rentals, and you know that multifamily investing is the right vehicle for you, I encourage you to visit jakeandgino.com forward slash apply to schedule your complimentary consultation with our team and I want to let you know this isn't a high pressure sales call. It's really just a discovery call to get to know each other better and see if we're a good fit for working together. And if for any reason we're not a good fit, our team has tons of resources we will share with you to help you along your journey. If you're ready to stop spinning your wheels, go to jakeandgino.com forward slash apply and schedule your call now. All right, we're back. So I have some off the cuff you know, stuff that you've just been uh, inspiring me to ask now. So no Wusa stuff, no Wusa stuff with Fred Hall. Wusa, baby. You're going down the, you're going down the, down the cones. You know, I don't even know what you're saying right now. Okay, <laughs> stop. <laughs> um, all right, you call them sabers, right? Yeah. Okay, there's six? Yeah. What, you may not have this information. I'm just curious. What is the average mm -hmm. uh, that, that people are utilizing, especially like the high performers? Is it four or is everyone using all six? What, what do you see out there? Yeah, that's a good question. What, what, so what I recommend for most people, the miracle morning, uh, whenever I give a speech on it and the book itself, it, it ends in a 30 day challenge, right? Because I think too many books, they give you a bunch of cool ideas and information, and then you end it going, wow, that was all mind blowing, but, but they don't end with like by funneling it down to here's exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it and how to be accountable to make sure you follow through. Right. So that was a key for me in the book was to give that. And I always, in the 30 day challenge, I always say, start doing all six of the savers for the first 30 days and see which ones work out for you. Um, and I always also recommend, you know, do 10 minutes each just to keep it simple, 10 minutes of meditation, 10 minutes of affirmations. If you've never meditated before, you can just go to YouTube and type in, you know, a free meditation or 10 minute meditation or whatever. Um, and then you'll get a feel for what serves you better. Some people like all six of the savers um, and, and, and most people do an hour, but a lot of people do a half an hour and some only do three of the savers. So no, Jake, I don't have that detailed. Just curious, like, the, like what's you know, Kiyosaki do? Does he meditate this, that, you know? So I mean, he says he does all six of them. So he, he nails them. That's and I do all six and I just do them. You can do them in any order. Like I do exercise last 
because I go work up a sweat, right? Um, some people say they do it first though, because otherwise they say it energizes them for their miracle morning. And if they don't mm -hmm. do it, then they fall asleep while they're meditating. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the you can stretching do, the, fall the under exercise order for any duration. Stretching probably comes under the exercise bucket, right? We're stretching. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. That's part of mine. I do, I do a little yoga. But that's morning. under the exercise one. I, I don't know if there's a few like miscellaneous ones floating out there that are like, you know, point ones or something, but all right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So you mentioned twice depression. What do you, what is it about the miracle morning? And, and you can even speak to yours specifically if you want that has helped folks with depression. So when I created the miracle morning, I was, I was depressed. And I think that that's a very loaded word because there's different levels of depressed. I've been depressed to the point of being suicidal. I was not that depressed, but I was in, I was 50 grand in credit card debt and, and drowning, you know, living on credit cards at that point in 2008. Um, again, my house was being foreclosed on. Uh, I was in the worst shape of my life physically. And so I was, and nothing I had tried worked for six months. I was reading books. I was trying to get clients and I was losing clients, not getting them. And my, I, my depression went away the very first day I did the miracle morning. And here's why. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't know who it is, Tony Robbins, but what, one, one reason that we feel depressed or one of one cause of depression is when we uh, don't have hope for the future, when we lose hope. And that was mine. I had lost hope because six months of trying to dig myself out of this financial hole. And it was like quicksand. I just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper on my very first miracle morning, even though it was pretty mediocre. Like I didn't know how to meditate. I wasn't good at any of these, the savers, right? I was, they were all kind of new to me. Um, but at the end of those 60 minutes, I felt incredible. I, you know, meditating calmed my nervous system. Reading those affirmations gave me some confidence in myself. Visualizing a better future gave me hope for what was possible, right? Exercising gave me energy. Reading, learning something I could apply to my business that would help me get clients was empowering. And then writing down what I was grateful for and stopping to be really present to that really put me in a good state. And I, at the end of that hour, I went, if I start every day like this, it is only a matter of, you know, feeling this energized and inspired and motivated and confident. It is only a matter of time before I develop myself and get better and better and better and become the person that I need to be to create everything I want for my life. And that's why my depression went away on that first day. Cause I went, I had hope again. I went, this is it. I figured out the one thing that can change everything. And we're usually looking for solutions outside of ourselves versus going, what do I need to do to like me? Like a, or like for a pill me? or something, right? Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Like a pill or, you know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, we're looking right? for something. Yeah. yeah, a pill, a supplement, a, 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 a program, right? How many, how many people buy an online course that they never use? Because they, well, I just, if I buy the course, the course will fix me, right? But ultimately, at the end of the day, your life only gets better to the degree that you get better. And so that for me was that day one breakthrough. Power. And I think that's the same for most people. So Hal, to expand a little bit about that, Tony Robbins talks about physiology. So physiology, mm. everyone listening to this, either stand up if you're driving, you're not, but just stand up, stand straight and just give me a smile. Give me a smile, Stenzi. How do you feel, bro? You just change your physiology. <laughs> Can you imagine if you're sitting and doing the savers for an hour and doing it in the morning and being intentional, doing what you like, you're scribing, you're journaling, you're exercising, you're getting endorphins. It's a game changer for a lot of people out there. And you talk about the state. If you get yourself into the right state early in the morning and you carry that along, it's really, really important. The other thing that Tony Robbins says is you aren't depressed. You do depressed. So if you're doing an action, maybe you can take control of that action and take control of your physiology. Your physiology is one of the most important things. You can change it right away. You can feel so much better just by getting up, breathing, taking control of your breathing, breathing a little bit intentionally, and just putting a smile on your face and those thoughts that go in. So just wanted to add that in there, Stenzi. It's great. No, it's Amen a great answer. Yeah, and no, it's fantastic. I mean, you're, you're doing depressed versus you're working on yourself, which is giving you hope that the future is going to be brighter than today. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. All right. Early on, you mentioned your friend was actually the, the key behind the miracle morning. He said, go find out what the, the, the best and the brightest are doing. What did he know that, you know, is such a simple thing? Like he's the guy that put, you know, like the cream and the chocolate together to make the Twinkie or whatever. Did you at least take him out to dinner afterwards and say, thanks for the idea? Or like, do you have any more you can, you know, uh, yeah. elaborate on So that? I called him. Uh, it was actually my wife. Uh, we were engaged at the time. And she said, she said, I, I'm so, you know, she saw me on the couch, just depressed and hope, you know, hopeless. And she said, um, look, why don't you call John Berghoff 
you know, one of your best friends, you say he's one of the smartest people you know, why don't you call him and ask him for advice? Maybe he could help you turn this thing around. And when she told me that, I go, why don't I call him sooner? And, and it was because, you know, I was, I, I didn't want to share, I think that I was struggling so bad. I just, it was, I wanted to fix it, you know, and, and not talk about it. And uh, when I called him, I said, yeah, man, I laid it out there how bad of a situation I was in. And he, I said, I'm really struggling. And he said, I'm so sorry to hear you're struggling. Um, are you exercising every day? And I go, what the hell does that have to do with anything? <laughs> he said, if you're sitting, and Gino, he said what you said about physiology. He said, Hal, if you're sitting at home feeling depressed all day, you're not going to come up with any brilliant ideas while you're in that low level of energy, that low energetic state. He said, you, every morning, you need to get out the front door, go for a walk, a jog, a run, and get the, the blood flowing to your brain so you can think clearer, have better ideas, figure things out. And he said, while you're on that walk, jog, or run, listen to an audio every day, some sort of audio that's relevant to whatever you need help with. Mm -hmm. And he recommended a Jim Rohn audio that first day. And so I found this Jim Rohn audio, grabbed my iPod, and went out the front door. And it was actually a quote from Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn said, your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. And that was when I went, wait a minute. I'm not dedicating time every day to my personal development, at least not in a really intentional focused way. Therefore, I'm not becoming the person that I need to be to create the success I want in my life. Mm -hmm. So it was this series of my buddy getting me to go for a run and listen to this Jim Rohn audio. Jim, Jim Rohn's words about your level of success not exceeding your level of personal development that led me to go, I need to go create the most effective personal development ritual and do it every single day until I become the person that I need to be to sustain the success that I want in my life. Awesome. So one of the savers is reading, correct? Mm -hmm. What uh, what have you read recently that's added value to your life that we can share with the folks? The, it's one of the best books I've ever read. It's called Inner Work, The Inner Work. Um, and the it's funny, I, the, the reason I found it is I, I bought it to do research for the current book that I'm writing because I'm writing a book on inner freedom, on like what I talked about earlier, how can you have complete control over how you experience your life? how you feel, what you think, right? How can you completely have freedom interior? And because if you, if, you if you figure that out, you win. Because then no matter what happens outside of you, you're in control of how you feel about it, of how you think about it, right? If the world's falling apart and you're distraught over it, well, then you're in trouble. If the world's falling apart and you're at peace with it and you're doing everything in your power, you know, that, that, that you have control over, then you're, you're fine, right? It is what it is. Mm. And so um, anyway, as I'm writing the book, I, I bought that book because it looked similar. And as I read it, I go, son of a bitch, this is the book I was going to write. <laughs> that, oh, like, we must have well, done. That's, same that's done. <laughs> intuitive hit. Yeah. And so, so I, I, I literally, I've been recommending it on my podcast. I go, look, guys, if you've been excited about this book I've been talking about that I've been writing for the last year, yeah, somebody else wrote it. Like, here you go. It happens. So, yeah. So right? it, it's called, if you go to, uh, go to Amazon, type in the inner work and the, um, the author's first name is Matthew. I can't think of his last name. And, uh, and it, the book is like a dark purple with like little bubbles on it and highly recommended. It's, it's really good. Got to check that one out. All right. So, uh, miracle equation, miracle morning, um, you know, your big time speaker, all this stuff, you know, how can folks get more of you? What's the best site? And, uh, you know, yeah, go to miraclemorning.com is the best spot. Um, okay. and it's a great hub. You can find the movie there. You can find the books there. Um, I also invite everybody to, if you scroll down on that page, you'll see join the community. And we have a Facebook group that I started in 2012 when the book came out that has 315,000 people in it now um, from like a, over 100 countries. And you, if you join, you'll see it is one of the, uh, it's one of the most inspiring, like to me, it's, it's, it's an example of the finest qualities of humanity. People support each other. They're vulnerable. They love each other. They don't argue over stuff, right? Like, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah, so miraclemorning.com is a great hub to get access to everything. All right, Gino, it's up to you now. What you got? We have a young Halrod. Halrod? I think you age... just made him A-Rod. I've been called no, Halrod no. before. <laughs> <laughs> at the age of 20, head on by a drunk driver. Goes into a coma for six days, breaks 11 bones in his body. Wakes up and he's told he can't walk. The fear sets in, but he overcomes that tragedy. Here comes 2008 in his late 20s. The Great Recession comes loses his house, has more adversity. 
in 2012, he comes up with the idea. And, you know, fortunately enough, his wife is probably the smarter one of the bunch. And she comes up with the idea, the miracle morning. How, why didn't you come up with that idea? How it's her idea. And he's like, man, that is an amazing idea. The savers technique. And this is what you really need to start off your morning. Fast forward. He's written and sold millions of books, the miracle equation, his catalyzing statement to elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time, talking about the Facebook group and how he's helping others coming from a journey of and a lot of up, a lot of heartache, and a lot of I would say, you know, just getting into stuff, and getting in your way, and not making those excuses, and just Jake and I are really proud to have you on the show. It's been really an honor to have you the second time, learning your story and also overcoming it. And for anybody listening to this, we could all make excuses. How could have packed it in years ago, and you would he wouldn't be here affecting millions of lives, multiple times, right? Yes, yeah. millions and, and and hopefully a billion lives, and that's what life is all about. We're all dealt the same cards. Depends how you play those cards and, and how's play those cards really well. And he will continue to play those lives and continue to affect others' lives. So thanks. Thanks for being on the show, Hal. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Gino. Thank you, Jake, man. I appreciate you guys. So thanks, fellas. Have a good day.